you are vibrational beings, but most humans don't understand that because you are so literal, you are so accustomed to what you can see and hear and smell and taste and touch that the things that you're thinking about don't feel as real to you, but they are. They are reality on the way to becoming the full-fledged materialized reality that you want. So often, as humans, you think of reality as only that which has already manifested. The reality of the car in the garage feels more real to you than the reality of the car that you desire. And others in your environment have asked you to not be unreal, don't get your head in the clouds and believe in things that have not yet come, only believe in things that have come. But we want to ask you a very important question. If you are, as most humans are, mostly fixated on what is already manifested, do you understand that you're not making room for new manifestations? If you're just looking at what is, you're just regurgitating it in different forms. So your life is different faces and different places, but much the same experience day after day. In order for you to experience the revolutionary expansion that you have already created, we're asking you to pay a lot less attention to what is and more attention to the vibrational version that is in the state of becoming. Because that is the leading edge and you are leading edge creators. You're out here on the leading edge of all that is. And you came deliberately to explore and to be with others, to notice their experiences and your own, in order to come to your own conclusions about what would be better, what would be more, what would be preferred for you from your vantage point. So we're just going to briefly, we know that many of you have heard this from us so many times that you could speak it yourself. But we want to set a basis of understanding and then off we'll go into whatever it is you want to talk about. Because we want you to understand that while you are in this physical body, and it matters so much, that there's a non-physical part of you that exists also, who is in constant communication with you vibrationally. And every emotion you feel is precisely about that communication. So as you came into this physical body, all of you didn't come. Some of you came, but most of you remained non-physical. You are non-physical source, non-physical soul, non-physical inner being. And that non-physical part of you is as active and involved in your day-to-day -day experiences as you are. More so, in fact, because of the understanding and the energy that that part of you is. So as you and your physical personality explore and know what you don't want and therefore come to conclusions about what you do want, some more vivid than others. Sometimes it feels to you that it's just knowing what you don't want and you don't even realize that you're launching a vibrational rocket of desire about what you do want. But isn't it obvious that when you know that when someone is rude to you, isn't it obvious to you that you know that you prefer something other than that? Everything that happens to you has a wanted and an unwanted version of it. Everything you witness has a wanted and an unwanted version of it because every particle of everything in the universe has within it wanted and unwanted. In other words, that's the balance of the universe. That's the balance from which you, magnificent, powerful creator, get to choose. So when you know what you don't want, you launch a rocket of desire of what you do want. And that rocket is received by your inner being, by that part of you who remains non-physically focused, who is not affected by the contrast that you are effectively utilizing in order to come to new expansion. So as that desire, that improved experience is transmitted by you, your inner being stands and we are presenting a different vantage point, although there really isn't some place that your inner being stands. But your inner being stands in receipt of your new request and in immediate universal response to it because law of attraction is responding to all thoughts. So law of attraction is responding to the thought that you think. But law of attraction is also responding to the thought that your inner being thinks about you. 
So you just put in a new specific request. You just ask for something more. And now that vibration is active in your inner being and your inner being has taken that valuable step forward into the new and improved you and stands there under the powerful law of attraction, emitting, projecting, producing, oozing, radiating, however you want to say it, transmitting a vibration that law of attraction is responding to. So you just expanded because, in a sense, you handed your desire off to your older, wiser, sure, steadier inner being, and your inner being has now got it. You like the sound of that? That's how it is. So now, the vibrational version of your creation is underway, and oh, it gets underway fast. Universal forces come to play, cooperative components begin coming into place, and what you've asked for begins gestating and lining up for you. It is readying itself for what? It's readying itself for you to be ready for it. But where are you? Are you over here in this contrasting place still beating the drum of what you don't want even though everybody else is over here on what you do want? So if you're feeling negative emotion that feels like doubt or worry or disbelief, doubt and disbelief, much the same, or frustration or anger, if your desire that you have launched doesn't feel good to you, then it means that even though your inner being has got it and even though it is gaining momentum and even though it's getting easier and easier for you to see it, if you're standing in doubt and frustration or even anger or fear, you're not going to see it. You're not going to be in the receptive mode enough for you to recognize the clues that your inner being is giving as your inner being says, you know, if you will walk this way and do this and go there and say this, then things that you want will begin to come into formation. But that is exactly how it works. Haven't you ever wondered how the becoming of all that you see has come about? Do you see any pipelines trucking it in from other planets? Of course you do not. And yet you must understand the progress of your environment, the incredible increase in your economy, in your beingness, in your well-being, in the way that you live. You've been expanding and evolving through this process. This is the expansion and extension and becoming of all species, of all things. So you explored, you launched that's step one. In other words, you ask. And your inner being caught the ball of your request and tends it forevermore. Holds it steady. That's step two. When you ask, it is given. And then you say, well, if it's given, where is it? Why isn't it in my garage? Why hasn't it shown up in my life experience? How do I get it in the bank? Where, 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 where is it? And we say, it's a vibrational version that you must turn into a thing. It's a vibrational version that you must focus into being in your life experience. And this is the part that so many of you are beginning to understand but are having a harder time doing for one reason and one reason only. You're fixated on what is. And if what is is not pleasing to you, if what is is lacking some of what you are wanting, if what is is missing the thing that you think you've asked for, then your awareness of its absence will keep its presence from becoming. It's just that simple. In other words, you can't set your radio dial on 98.7 and hear what's being broadcast on 101. Your receiver has to be set at the same frequency as the transmitter. And you are being transmitted from your inner being all things that you want. The question is, are you in the state of allowing? Are you in the receiving mode? So for a while we talked to you about these things. We've been writing full books about them. First book that you began really receiving was Ask and It Is Given. And that was talking about step one, two, three. One, contrast causes you to ask. Two, source answers it. And oh, we want to find so many ways of helping you to understand how emphatic and direct and specific and fast that answer is. And then three, you've got to get into the receiving mode in order for what's being answered to be reflected in a meaningful way in your experience. 
And as we said just a bit ago, the thing that keeps that from happening as swiftly and easily for you as it can is that you have your attention upon what is, and if what is is different from what the vortex version of it is. Now, this vortex is this vibrational reality where your inner being stands, where the gestation of your vibrational reality is becoming. And if you're not able or willing to accept that vibrational version, and if you don't get it that the vibrational version is being responded to by law of attraction and the wherever you're at version is being responded to by law of attraction, that means if you're doubting something that you're wanting, then you're not, as long as that's going on, going to hear the encouragement that your inner being is giving you about where to be. So even though the potential for rendezvousing with so many things that help the things that you want unfold, you may be missing it because you're out of sync with your desire. You're more in sync with what caused you to ask for the desire to begin with. You get the sense of what we're talking about? So everything that we're talking about when we're together with you is first to help you to find this understanding of how it works and then next to help you find ways of practicing things that do work so that you can begin to manage your vibration. So step one is ask. Step two is source answers. Step three is you want to get in the receptive mode and you're getting better and better at that. Have you noticed? More of the things that you want are beginning to come into your experience. Step four is being really good at step three. And you might think that's a funny thing to give a whole new step to just getting good at something. But the difference between occasionally being in the receiving mode and chronically being in the receiving mode is a big, big difference in the way things unfold in your life. In other words, once you get it, that it feels good to feel good and that you can feel good no matter what's going on, once you are able to not let conditions, even blatant conditions that are in your face, someone up close to you seeming to deliberately do something that would cause you to feel negative emotion, when you can maintain your alignment anyway, you are a step four master of the receiving mode. And we don't meet many of those. We don't meet many of those. And yet... That's really what we are encouraging in you because once you are mastering this, then you have a smooth ride no matter what ne'er-do-wells are buzzing around in your experience. You have a smooth ride anyway. It's what unconditional love really is. It's being connected to source no matter what. It's the difference between empathizing with someone in their struggle and staying in this compassion where your vibration doesn't shift downward. So... What we're really saying to you is your happily ever after that you're reaching for is really dependent upon you understanding the law of attraction, you understanding the two vibrational aspects of you, you understanding what vibration feels like when it's in harmony or in alignment and what vibration feels like when it's discordant. We want you to love your emotions, whether they are feeling negative in the moment or whether they are feeling wonderful in the moment, because in every case, they're giving you guidance about what you might do with your focus of thought in order to shift your vibrational output in order to change your vibrational receiving. Law of attraction is responding to your vibration. In other words, you get what you're thinking about whether you want it or not. So the best way for you to control what's coming back to you is to control what you're sending out in terms of thoughts. You're the only one who can block the path. You're the only one who can keep the things that are working out for you from working out for you. Nothing else can get in the way. It can't be an irresponsible person in another hotel. It can't be a deliberately irresponsible person in another hotel. It can't be anyone with ill intent pointed toward you. It isn't that. You think it is because when it hits you, it feels wrong to you. And when something feels wrong to you, the automatic assumption is someone else is doing this to me because I would not do this wrong thing to me, but you did every time, or this right thing to you. That's the thing that we really want you to hear. So many of the things that you think are wrong things happening to you are not wrong things happening to you. They're right things happening to you. You just made it harder than it needed to be because you weren't really tuned in to the frequency of who you are. In other words, it's so good, isn't it? Isn't it good to know that you create your own reality and that you have help beyond verbal description, 
the energy that creates worlds, all descending and converging and cooperating for the expansion of that which is you. <laughs>